Welcome back to another video on the 1960 El Camino. If you're new here, my name is Travis. My dad, he's around here somewhere. His name is Rick. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It lets YouTube know, hey, these are some good old boys. Let's push their video to more people. In the last video, we ended with getting it running. But we ran into some issues. Remember how I couldn't get the fan on? That ain't good. Fan ain't gonna fit. Oh, sir. And some of the comments said, you're gonna have to change the motor mounts out because that V8's not gonna fit in there. Those motor mounts are for a six cylinder. We did read those comments, but the thing was we ran the VIN number and everything said that it was a V8. The motor went in fine. It bolted right up. The transmission went in. The only time we had a problem was when I went to put the fan on. The fan was too high for the fan shroud. It had all kinds of room down there, but it had no room up here. So we, before we started tweaking everything, we did a bunch of measuring, and turns out the motor mounts are for a six cylinder. We're not sure how that happened because the VIN says it was a V8, so we didn't think we were gonna have a problem. Although we did see those comments, everything was going straight. Dad had built a 59 Chevy wagon a couple years ago, had some of the V8 mounts, went outside and found them, and sure enough, the mounts for the V8 are different than the six cylinder. We put the uh, V8 mounts up to the motor mounts we had on the car with the motor in it and everything. These are the motor mounts that we had bolted to this engine. And you can see down there, this motor mount is about two inches taller than that one. So the correct V8 engine mount puts it two inches down and two inches back. Our first red flag was having to use this transmission mount, which my dad had laying around. This is a factory one somebody modified. You can see this plate they welded and elongated the slots. This is now the factory one that came off this car that we put back in it. You can see it hasn't been modified and the bolts fit directly in the middle. So our transmission was two inches forward from the beginning. Second red flag. <sighs> the accelerator arm. You see how we had to weld that up we had to cut this arm because originally it came down and on a six cylinder they come down and then there's a rod that goes up for the carburetor it's mounted somewhere around here so we had to modify that accelerator arm to move up so that we could hook it to our v8 so we had three red flags that we didn't listen to that we probably should have noted also in the comments uh, a couple people said the correct v8 motor mounts Obviously, we'll push it two inches down and two inches back, which it did. And they said, <clears throat> a lot of people said that the distributor, the HEI distributor, wouldn't fit. Um, but it does. Just so everybody knows that the HEI distributor does fit without any modifications to the firewall or anything like that. Our hoses still fit. Our upper hose, our lower hose fits. We're going to go ahead and put the fan on right now and see if the fan fits. And if it does, we are golden. We can run it and drive it. If you also remember in our last video, we had another fan for it. Where is our other fan? We had two other fans. This is the first one we tried and we thought it was too big. We didn't know at the time that our motor mounts were wrong. So this fan we thought was too big. We had a second fan that we tried right here. And this one wouldn't fit, but we ended up figuring out that the bolt pattern on these two fans is smaller than the bolt pattern on this 327 than this this bolt pattern is bigger so neither of these those two fans would fit moment of truth looks like it started it fits it doesn't hit the top. All right, all the bolts are tight on the fan. Check it out. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Now we can go ahead and put the belt on. And with the engine being two inches down and two inches back, remember in the last video, the first start of the video, we had to shorten the drive shaft an inch, uh, an inch, exactly. That was for the old motor mount. Since the motor is back further, we have to recut the drive shaft another probably two inches uh, so that it'll fit these new motor mounts and people asked in the comments heard this multiple times when we cut it the first time how are you going to balance it because those things got to be balanced well first of all when you put the drive shaft in you can you can test it and drive it uh, and if it has a small vibration to it you 
you take a hose clamp, you put it on there, and you just keep moving it around, moving it around mm. until the vibration gets a little. Uh, because the hose clamp's pretty much acting like a weight. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That you can move around. Because they do have, I saw them when we cut, cut it the first time, they have tiny little weights on them, almost like a wheel weight that's welded, like tack welded to the drive shaft. Should be on there. Is that good enough? Yeah. Okay. Dad's gonna work on shortening the drive shaft. I want to work on the wiring because we wired up all these lights, but we tried. Uh, we put some light bulbs in it. Tried the light switch. None of the lights came on. We're losing power somewhere. The housings might have a bad ground. So we got to figure out why that's happening. We have the test light grounded. We have the battery hooked up and the headlight switch on. And we got power to the lights. This housing, you see how it's real rusty? We could be losing ground right at the housing. Check the other one. Okay, so we have power coming back here. We just got, we just got bad grounds. Yeah, we're just losing our ground somewhere. There we go. Try it. Try it again. Okay. okay click your uh, brights off. Okay, so the dimmer switch does work. Again. Okay, so the brights work. Well, they would work. On. We got one light to work, uh, but the other ones aren't working. And, and it's because we have a ground problem. Let me show you. So if I take this light out very gingerly, test light in there, boom. So the electricity can't get from here to the car, to the frame. We have a wire hooked to the hot coming all the way back. So we're giving ourselves an auxiliary power. Ooh, ooh, about fell. Okay, we got the lights on. <clears throat> Let me show you something here. So if I touch this to ground, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting ground. Now if I touch the housing of the light, I'm also getting a, a ground. Now if I come over here to this one that's not working, housing is grounded to the car, but the light is still not working. And if I touch the housing of the light, the light's not working. But if I touch the housing I'm basically using the metal of this test light to connect the light housing and the aluminum housing that's bolted to the car. So we are losing ground from the light housing to the housing mounted to the car. So dad's jacking the back of the car up so we can work on that drive shaft and I'm gonna try and work on these light housings. But yeah, everything's rusty. These screws are rusty, the body's rusty. So you, uh, it's very easy to lose ground on these old cars. Had it happen on the International. Lens housing, this piece is crimped in, which is this piece, and this brass piece fits in there. So you have three separate pieces that all have to ground. So that's what I'm talking about. Oh, you little. See? That out of grinding here. All right, well, it's off there. Well, all right, guys, look at that. We have all four work. Now, I'm not gonna put the lenses on them yet as much as I would like to because it just makes everything look so much better. Um, I'm waiting to 
What are they? Right there, those bad boys. I'm coveting those things. Those things are a pretty penny. The brake lights aren't working and the turn signal's not working. So I'm gonna wait to put the lenses on until we can figure out why the brake light and the turn signals aren't working. Uh, Dad is test fitting the drive shaft. We cut another two inches, two and three, two inches off? three quarters this time. Okay, an inch and three quarters this time, an inch last time, so two and three quarters inches. Um, but continuing on with the lights. Now, we straightened out the grill a little bit. Maybe you don't remember what it looked like before, but it was really bent up. So instead of buying another one, uh, just took and straightened out the, the ribs a little bit, make it good enough. But these headlight buckets are obviously what hold the headlight in, and these are gonna have to be taken off cleaned, painted, and these are your adjusters right here, well, which are trashed. I'm gonna paint it first and then put the adjusters in. See an example right here. Um, see that arm right there? That's that, and then it, uh, these are broken off, but they come up and a screw goes in them. These special screws right here, these slotted ones, they go in them and then they, you can screw them in and out and it tilts your headlight like this so you can get them you know, pointed at the road and everything. And these grills, guys, these are really, they're pretty delicate. I mean, they started making them out of aluminum and they're very easy to bend. All right, so now we got to drill these old headlight adjusters out. You know, I bought this a few months ago at an antique shop for $17. And it's an old Craftsman box, but when I opened it, it had every single drill bit inside, every drill bit. They're all sharp. This is probably like the coolest thing I've bought in at least a few months. I wish I could tell you where to buy one, but it's like 50 years old. I got no idea. Yeah, like go with one a hair bit bigger, and then that just kind of just knocks it out around the plastic. Like that one. See, now this one is actually intact. You can see this is a whole whole kit and caboodle, but I mean, you say, oh, we'll reuse it. You know why? I mean, watch. You know, that ain't gonna hold a headlight. Oh, we're running out, like now. All right, that's done. Uh, I had another one. <laughs> A little bit more. Yeah. Look at Boo Boo. <laughs> Look at that dog. Look at him supervising. Are you supervising? Looking all stoic. He's supervising, isn't he? Look at him, still sitting there supervising. All right, check it out. Nice and black. They're gonna look good. That's factory right there. That's as good as factory. Loving it. <sighs> Let me get under here. Hold on. The drive shaft is in for the final time. That's the mount for the uh, carrier bearing. And it comes up. Dad welded the yoke on. You can see it there. Fits into the transmission and it doesn't shove into the tail shaft. When you bounce up and down, that, that yoke goes in and out. Um, it's meant to do that. And it's spaced right. It doesn't slam into the transmission. And it's good all the way to the back. <sighs> After cutting it twice, it's good to go. Rivet gun, pop rivet gun. 
and then our little plastic pieces and I'm trying to be real careful these things are delicate these come in like a baggy kit from eBay and I don't want to break them because if you break one I don't think there's extras sometimes you got to get a second grab on there it'll pop that's why they call them pop rivets there's one all right we got all the headlight buckets finished we got all the pieces in for the headlight adjusters got it bolted to the grill got these headlight buckets bolted to the body and this piece just came in the mail and this is key to tying this all together because this valance panel or whatever you want to call it we're gonna have to paint it bam it goes right there this valance panel or whatever you want to call it ties all this front end together it bolts here, the hood latch bolts there so that we can put our hood on, and the grill also bolts to these bolt holes right here along with bolt holes on the bottom. Once we get this piece painted up, we can put it in, put the grill on, and put the headlights in, and put the hood latch on for the hood. And if you also notice, we have the carburetor off because Dad's rebuilding it because uh, when we would run it, we pour gas down it, run it, then it would die. Run it, then it would die. Um, there was a type of seat in there that was really really hard to blow through and it wasn't letting fuel in oh so we got a kit for the carburetor <coughs> we're going to fix the fuel delivery problem and while it's apart we're just going to rebuild the entire thing get it set on there so that we can finally drive it and we also fixed a problem down here this rod is what changes your gears and if you can see that piece down there you had to weld to the shifter on the transmission so now the transmission shifts and we'll have all our gears so things are coming together. This is always the exciting part of the build process when all of your days of work actually come together and you get to put a big piece on, you know, a real key piece. That always makes me feel good. So let's gingerly set this in. Got a lot more, but that's where she's gonna sit. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I love it, okay. So that goes like that. I know this this front end obviously got smashed in, so I, we're kind of fighting all kinds of variables here. You know, things could have been tweaked. I didn't say it in the video, but when uh, earlier, when I was putting the battery tray in, uh, I had it, I had problems with it fitting. It was hitting the inner fender. I think it had this got hit, pushed, you know, tweaked the body in, and we're we're dealing with other tweaking issues here. But just I'm just looking at a preliminary sort of thing. It's gonna take a little bit of finagling, but it'll be just fine. Freaking cool, dude. I love it. I got the headlight wires ran through. Here's one for uh, your lows and your highs and all that. So we'll fish it through this here and your anchor. Yeah, your anchor is at the bottom and your adjustments are top and left. I already chased them and tapped them and everything. So they're gonna go in pretty smooth. Okay, top, nine o'clock. Now we can put our special screws in to the headlight buckets, uh, the special adjusting screws. And these naturally, these plastic clips naturally have some resistance in them when you put the screws in. They don't just screw in like, like butter. Uh, and, and they do that just to kind of keep your adjustment. Putting some dielectric grease on them. All right, so we're plugged in. Put some more gobbledygook on there. <sighs> All right. 
that's nerve wracking. These plastic pieces are very plastic and brittle. Okay. Power. What we got? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's try the brights. Three, two, one. What do we got? Oh yeah. <laughs> that looks so good, dude. Oh yeah, I love it. Headlights just give a car that that spark of life, you know? Beautiful. Did you get it? Dang. I didn't know how they were gonna do that. Heck yeah. Let's walk around this way. I gotta go up high. Whoa. All right, well, I don't think you're in the... There you go. Hold on, let me get one in. You might as well get your back one in because the hood's got to go up higher. I don't know if it's bent or... Perfect. Are you in the middle, kind of? Yeah, about in the middle. Okay. So obviously you can see this side's sticking up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if the hood hinge is just sticky from being old, but the passenger side is going down, but driver side one's having an issue closing all the way hinge this is sticking way up in midair but this one is is fine we notice that that hood hinge is bent see how this hinge comes and it's just straight back from here you can get a better angle this comes straight back this is perfectly straight and you can see how this one comes down like it's just it's been bent into a U look at that doesn't look right at all. Get ready. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right, I think we're there. No, I think we need to go more flat. Me too. Now you're gonna need to tap, get a hammer. Yeah. To tap that down. Move your, move your torch. It's pretty flat. Yeah, actually, it's went just a hair bit the other way, hadn't it? messing with it. Damn, that looks pretty good. That's looking a lot better. Oh yeah. Gap over here, this this side could probably go down a little bit, but that's a million times better. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to, gonna have to go back just a hair. See, it's kinda, 
Yeah, I think if I go over this way just a little bit, it'll yeah. move the hood. Dad's adjusting our gap a little bit on the uh, adjustment on the hood hinge. Um, it's just a hair bit out of adjustment. We got it pretty good the first time, actually. That was pretty close. But I'm going to put the uh, hood latch on. We got all of this on yesterday, that, that piece I told you about, that valance panel that needed to be painted that connects the grill and the whole front end together. Got the hood latch on. It works. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Only 20% of our viewers are from subscribers. So let's get that number up a little bit. Also, our PO box is now open if you want to send dad or me something or us something. Would love to hear from you guys. And we're also still looking for a driver's side door for our 46 International. Any help with that would be greatly appreciated. Well, this is a first. Our tap broke off in the hole. And we weren't even really going that hard on it. This isn't even half as difficult to haul as we've tried in the past. That doesn't make any sense. 